Hello and welcome to this consumption based model lesson. You can think of consumption based sort of like you pay as you go model. I hope these words you might have already heard about when it comes to the uh, cloud model. So when we say about pay as you go that means whatever we use the services for that specific minutes or hours we are gonna charge for that so there's no upfront cost so it's all about the services what we use we're gonna pay for that that's called a pay as you go model we will take a look at uh, uh, what what we mean by consumption based model now within Microsoft Azure instead of buying any uh, kind of equipment upfront like we used to do it in our traditional data centers we only have to buy the resources that we uh, that we need when we need of them so let's first uh, look at this image and uh, we'll uh, talk on that when compared with the traditional data center versus the Azure services model now with the traditional data center you see the blue line uh, which is the capacity line uh, which is usually planned for a different step so when we go upfront uh, for our uh, capacity we might need to add up new servers when we need a uh, when we need then uh, level out or more or uh, sometime and then we need to add new servers again and again because of the demand from the customer uh, which is the red line of the consumption which is coming up so you might need to uh, look into it so now if you see here as the demand arises uh, and falls we might not either be meeting our demand if you see here if the demand is you know, going down that means uh, here the servers are ready but it, they are sitting idle they are not fully loaded when the demand is going raising up the customers will you know feel the dissatisfaction because of the services are not working properly which would you normally see in your traditional data centers so these are the both bad areas uh, one is a waste and other one would be the customer dissatisfaction uh, which are a result of inc uh, incrementally buying service ourselves as we need them are not being able to match the demand of our application nearly as uh, preciously and we could like and uh, like with uh, azure and other hand we see two lines in this diagram there is no waste or no customer dissatisfaction because of the uh, we can set it up uh, properly elastically and scalability configuration to auto scale automatically based on our demand uh, and whenever there's no demand just uh, scale down those servers uh, so that you are saving the cost at the same time when you have a business that means uh, you need to make your customers uh, fully happy so you're increasing by using the scale up uh, or scalability or elasticity based on configurations within the Azure. So that would make it more easy for you to uh, configure in such a way. This uh, makes us a pay as you go model and gives you more returns in terms of the cost saving. So this kind of touches on the uh, on the consumption based model, paying only for what you're using and when you're using it and so with the consumption based model we have no more upfront investment and we no longer have to buy servers in incremental like uh, we used to buy it in the blue line in the image of the left side uh, which is our traditional data center and instead we can pay as you go model and uh, what it means is we are gonna paying for only when the resources are uh, used uh, additionally, we can even get discounts uh, within Microsoft Azure. When we reserve with Microsoft, uh, you can get um, anywhere from 10 to 40 percent discount on Microsoft Azure uh, products uh, and services is just by uh, committing to one to three years of uh, time frame so that you would be getting a uh, discount for Microsoft Azure services. This is sort of bulk discount at play as well. Uh, the more servers or the more resources that you use the lower price you can get it on each individual server or resources like I said just uh, a kind of like a bulk discount and our model is one where uh, we only pay for what we use so again if you turn the machine off you're no longer paying for it if you turn it back on only then you're gonna paying for that uh, otherwise you're not going to pay uh, pay for that as Microsoft Azure uh, grows larger and larger 
uh, they are able to offer lower prices uh, so to you will be able to pay less for Azure services as Microsoft as you grows so in other way when you go for the larger commitment uh, think that we are buying our servers or hardware or the resources within Azure uh, it's more like we are renting them not exactly the buying but we are just trying to renting them I can rent a server for one minute uh, to maybe two three years also and I can pay for only for that one minute if I at all I used or if I just switched on that server I'll just pay for that one or two minutes whatever the time which the CPU executed or I could uh, rent a server for 10 years if I wanted but the point is here we are only paying for while we are using it so it's really cost effective so this is very useful for these small business and individuals who uh, wanted uh, to start their infrastructure on immediate basis um, who, or host their application servers in a world-class data centers without any of uh, problems that you have or or expenses of building your own operating data centers or operating system and maintaining those data centers uh, when we look at uh, some of these services that we can use uh, we have uh, computing services that we pay for only CPU and uh, like I said uh, if we rent a server for one hour we are paying uh, for uh, based a uh, cost uh, for just for that one hour so think about uh, when you buy that specific server uh, you would be you know, paying for heavy cost but you know but you're not using in that situation if just the one hour if you use you are only paying for that one hour of Azure services so which is a good and which is a cost effective when you talk about uh, data transfer what if the data is getting transferred uh, from external to our data center that's not going to charge but anything going out from the data center which is as you data center to out you're going to charge so which is a good uh, in other way and it's more uh, granular level of uh, pricing for uh, in a GBB is what you're going to charge for that and storage also the same way uh, for the but GB it's gonna charge for you so it's so easy like you know what we have a discuss uh, so far is pay less when you reserve and um, pay less by using more and more resources and pay for a use model and pay less when as you grows because uh, once they get used discounts and you are getting that benefit out of it and pay for only computing power based on a CPU uh, or whatever the time was executed and similarly the storage also whatever the data you are going to store for that only you're going to pay you're not going to pay for the data which is not yet stored uh, unlike in the traditional data centers you would be buying a huge big bulky sand disks and the, the storage drives or uh, storage uh, but in this case it's unlimited storage uh, all you have to do is you have to you know just store your data and uh, segregate in a right way and that would take care of uh, costing uh, which is very less in cheap in fact it's very very cheap when compared uh, to traditional data center uh, data storage with cloud storage and coming to the data storage data transfer as I said it's going to be charged by a gigabyte uh, which is a data out not into the inside to the data which is coming to Azure data center it's not going to charge but anything goes out that means for example you hosted a server so that's a huge transactions is going to happen so you're going to charge for that because the data is going out from Azure data center to outside to your customer I hope this is useful for you and uh, I hope I made it very clear for the consumption-based model.